Mm. All right, what's up, folks? Don Bernard Jr. here with the brother Todd Hamilton. Really, really dear friend of mine. Look up to this guy. Great opinions on life, business, everything. Um, and so we're just going off the cuff, just going with the flow. And part of what we were talking about before is passion, you know, and you know, why people don't follow their passion in the first place. Because you have this desire, right? You feel it a lot of times when you're young. Like, you'll start saying you want to be a doctor when you're like five. But then you don't become a doctor. Like, you wind up, I don't know, working in some kind of factory. Or... So why is that? Why do you feel people sway so much from something that's like a heart desire? Well, I think, you know, putting it that way, I think there's a couple of things. I think one big thing is that um, uh, culturally and possibly, I think it also depends on your family, but family, as yeah. a culture, is doing what you're passionate about considered the best way to go through life? Or are you told that you need to spend your time learning, spend your time working? And then I think the other aspect of that is trying enough things to discover what it is that you're passionate yeah, about. Yeah, I think a lot of times we just don't know, right? Yeah. You know, you have to explore. I kind of feel like we're given this feeling we should already know in the beginning. You know, like already oh, know that, you know, through school or you go to college. So many people are like, I felt insecure the whole time through college. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. Absolutely, yeah, I was in the same boat. You know, but it's almost like you're working towards something you don't know you're working towards. And um, I feel like even now, like coming out of college, people are still in this space of, oh, you haven't done this already, or you haven't gotten there already, but they haven't even sure. explored where to be in the first place. Sure. Well, then, okay, that you, you look at it like if society tells you there's milestones in life, one of your milestones is get through high school, right? graduate from college, get into college first, graduate from college, get the job, mm -hmm. meet somebody get married, start a family, do stuff with your family, you know, and, and you have people who kind of, they go through life like on this race, I'm going to be the first one to do all of these milestones, and they're really the very proud of themselves. Right. They may not be doing what they love at all, but hey, yeah. you know, I'm married, I have a job, I graduated college, I have... I'm doing this exactly And right. that's when you have the midlife crisis. That's, that's what the midlife crisis is, yeah. It's, wow. It's that, it's that look back and the, the recognition that, you know, something, I missed the boat somewhere. It's like I've done all of this. I'm supposed to be happy. I was right. told this is going to make me happy, but I'm not happy, and I can't ignore it anymore. Well, clearly, you know, we're at a space where we're doing what we love. We're following our passion. Absolutely. What was it for you? that allowed you to do that? Oh man, um, it was courage to... Courage, right? Yeah, it was courage. It, you know, when I look back, I actually have always known that my passion is what I should be doing. Mm. But I never believed that um, that was okay. I never believed that... It was never identified to me as a possibility. Mm. You know, I, I was raised... Um, with a lot of freedom intellectually to, to think what I wanted to think, to believe what I wanted to believe. Uh -huh. But at the same time, there was a, um, a very strong message that you, this is how you do it. Mm. Whatever you want to do, you right. can do, but you have to do it this way. Right. And it just so happens that what it is that I'm passionate about, which is working with people, mm -hmm. refining passions, um, helping people to live their own passions, that's not really on the list. Right. One and two, there's no direct roadmap to exactly making a living or living a life doing this kind of an activity. So it had to come through self-discovery, through discovery of, of you know the world and of trying and failing at many other things. In fact, you know, knowing how to fail, right? Like so many times, people don't allow themselves to fail. Yes. That was one of the big lessons that helped to bring me closer to my passion. Mm -hmm. um, that's 
uh, Robert Kiyosaki's thing. And, right. and in, this, in this case, he's talking about business, but it, I believe it it works for any other yeah, spiritually place in life. relationships. Relationships. Everything. I was just going to say, yeah. you know, he says basically your chance of making a business successful is one in ten. So mm. you can go out and say, I'm going to start this business, and I'm going to do my best to make it successful. Or you can say to yourself, All right, I'm going to plan on starting ten businesses. Right, and that's that's the difference. You're looking for a loved one, or in maybe your life. ten relationships. Ten relationships. Right? Just gonna say. <laughs> I know it's like, you may have to talk to ten women before one's going to give right. you any attention. Might not, be the eleventh. Not you or me. I mean, right, you know, of course. Yeah, we're different. totally fine in this. You know, predicament. But you know, for the other schmoes out there, right? You know, to set your sight on ten. I had actually, I, I had someone tell me that once that. It was a little on the on the racier edge, but a little flavor here. Uh -huh. If you want to sleep with a woman at night, you just need to walk up to ten and ask. Well, one of them, <laughs> <laughs> nine might slap you or tell right. you to go f yourself or whatever it is, but one of them's gonna say, "All right." <laughs> so okay, so what's the main thing people should come away with if they're they're scared right now? They want to follow their passion. They don't know how to do it. What's what's the first step? You, you said it before, knowing what your passion is, knowing identifying what, is, yeah. what your passion is, and mm. I don't believe there's a, um, a recipe right. to be able to make that decision, but yeah. what you ask yourself is, what is it that gives me the most joy, the most happiness, and that helps the people around me the most? Yeah. Because ultimately, if you're talking about, and I'm going to separate this, there are passions wow. that um, we may have that may actually serve no greater purpose in, in the world around us. Mm. You know, so you might be passionate about, you know, well, no, that's not a good example. You could be passionate about anything, but if you're looking how can you actually take your passion and, and do it as a living, then it has to be something that actually is marketable in a sense, or that can lead to some sort of a, you know, a business function. Mm. Um, so it's almost like looking at your passions, what is it that you love, but what is also going to help the most people around you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll return to that.